I've reviewed several speaker isolators over the years and they all improve the sound quality. Although using quite different constructions, they all worked according to the spring and damper principle. Recently Stack Audio offered their OVO 70 for review that worked quite differently. Vibrations in audio equipment are unintended movements thus always cause distortion. In turntables, the tone arm, the chassis and even the cantilever suspension can cause spurious movements, movements that differ from the groove modulation and thus will distort the sound. That is why good turntables have heavy sockets, a floating subchassis or both. In the 70s people created a sandbox, placed a solid plate on the sand and place the turntable on the plate. Sand is an effective damper of vibrations. Even today the sandbox is popular. See Root's final guide. Link at the usual places. The same system can be used for loudspeakers of course. But for loudspeakers spring and damper systems are less of a nuisance and less eye catchy. Last year I have reviewed the Townsend Seismic Podium that offers a platform on damped springs to place the speakers on. The Audiophysic VCF2 Magnetic Plus Vibration Control Feed that use magnets as springs and isoacoustic Gaia 2 that use rubber like springs if I recall well. These systems allow for some movement of the loudspeaker, movement that should be damped. The spring damper relation depends on the weight of the loudspeaker and when chosen optimally loudspeaker movement should be minimal. The Townsend gave the most improvement but did not pass the aesthetics committee. The audiophysic and isoacoustic products perform about equal. The first still are under the audiophysic Scorpios, the second under my PMCs in setup 1. They proved to be a perfect investment in sound quality. I have said it here before and I repeat it here again, spikes do not isolate vibrations. Some think that spikes conduct vibrations in one direction and blocks them in the other. This is absolutely untrue. Spikes conduct sound in both directions. Then why do spikes often make loudspeakers sound better? Spikes work well on carpeted floors for they stick through the carpets and make direct contact with the solid floor beneath. That way they fix the loudspeaker solid so that the kinetic energy coming from the drivers cannot cause movement in the cabinet in the opposite direction. The Stack Audio OVO uses a completely different principle, somewhat related to the sandbox. Like the Audiophysic and Isoacoustic products, the each spike on the loudspeaker is replaced by an OVO isolator. So you need four isolators per loudspeaker. The isolators are machined aluminium cases containing multiple cells in which a mix of particles of, amongst others, tungsten powder. They act like sand in a sandbox, converting kinetic energy into heat. Stack Audio has applied for patent and wisely does not want to disclose more until the patent is granted. Currently two models are available, the OVA 70 and the OVA 100. The OVA 70 has a diameter of 70 mm and the OVA 100, you've guessed it, 100 mm. The 100 also has two more cells, five instead of three, and thus can absorb extra amounts of vibration. A smaller, lower priced version is being developed. For placement on carpet, Three spikes per isolator are supplied. This secures the loudspeaker to the solid floor under the carpet. For carpetless floors the spikes are not used. Instead sticky felt pads are supplied not to damage the floor. I will send the OVA 70s with M8 threads to fit my PMCs. Quarter inch, M6, M10, M12 and M14 threads can be ordered alternatively from stock. Other sizes are available on demand. As said, the diameter of the review samples is 70 mm. The height is 36 mm, while the spikes are 14 mm in height. Each isolator 
weighs 0.4 kilograms. You have to assemble each isolator by screwing in the thread, adding the locking nuts and either screwing in the spikes or sticking on the felt pads. I mounted the Alva 70s to the PMC FACT 12 signature loudspeakers. The amplifier was the AIR AX520 connected to the PMCs over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The Court Dave did the digital to analog conversion and was connected to the AIR over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. The Grim Audio Mu1 digital player was connected to the Dave over Siltec AES EBU cable. Both the Dave and the Grim were connected to the mains over a transparent power isolator 8. A network acoustics muon Ethernet filtering cable connected the Grim to the Sistel GS1900-10HP switch. Connection to the Internet is over a CAT6 cable to the Internet modem. From the Sistel switch a glass fiber connection goes to the Netgear ProSafe GS418TPP switch on the third floor where the Intel NUC 10i7 FNH running Rune Rock is connected over a CAT6 patch cable. The NUC is the Rune server, the Grim Audio the Rune endpoint in this setup. An Apple iPad Pro was used to operate Rune. The room where the testing took place has brick and mortar walls, ceiling and floor. On the concrete floor is an oak floor on a damping subfloor. I expected a cumbersome comparison between the AUVAs and the isoacoustics GAIAs that I happily used in my setup one for about a year now. Replacing eight isolators, then listening, changing them back, listening again, you get the picture. But there was no need. The difference was obvious. Using the Gaia 2s was a big improvement over using the standard ball tipped feet of the PMCs. But the OVA 70s were yet another step better. The impulse response was improved, resolution was increased over the entire band, timing was tighter and then there was the lows. Not only was there an impressive more texture, bass was also quite a bit tighter. Yes, yet again. Although my set of 1A already is of rather high quality, the OVAs brought something magical to the setup. It must be the further reduced time smear, better timing. The music is more evolving, more immersive. And it's the same with all tracks I played. I want to stress that all three systems I have reviewed last year clearly improved the sound, but surely the audio physics and the isoacoustic products not to the level that the Alvas do. Since I have tested the Townsend Seismic Podium system using my previous loudspeakers, I can't compare those. It's amazing to hear how eight of these little feet can largely solve the remaining low end acoustic trouble I had in some places in the room. Two years ago I would have thought they were room modes that next to loudspeaker placement could only be cured with acoustic measures. I have always wondered why the piano did not suffer from room modes where my stereo did. It was after the hefty upgrade of my reference system 1A that I discovered that even the Grim digital player reduced the problem. As did the DAC, the amp, the speakers and indeed the speaker isolators. Taking acoustic measures in the living room is not automatically accepted by the aesthetics committee. The same was the case with the Townsend seismic podiums while the isolators by audio physics, isoacoustics and Stack Audio passed the committee with flying feathers. Stack Audio charges 700 pounds excluding VAT which, at the time this video was produced, boiled down to just below 1000 euros including VAT in Europe. The AudioPhysic VCF2 magnetic plus vibration control feed have an MSRP of 769 euros and the Isoacoustics Gaia 2s 678 euros. Depending on the size and weight of your speakers, the Townsend Seismic Podiums vary in price between 1679 euros and the 3799 euros. All prices for a stereo setup, including 21% VAT delivered in Europe. If your stereo has cost you 2000 euros, 
I would invest in other things first, probably starting with the source. But if your stereo was 5K or more, I would surely try one of these solutions. A good dealer will be happy to lend you a set or you can order them online when they, like with Stack Audio, can be returned for a refund. Which brings me to the end of this video. See you next week, Friday at 5 pm Central European Time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially, especially in these times. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or in the HPproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.